There's very little doubt in my mind that if we're trying to create a montage image that has impact and appeal, the more images we've got to choose from, the better. What I've done is to look back over some of my old railway pictures and I've dragged out just this batch you can see here. And what my intention is, is to make a montage from the images you see here. Not all of them, of course. I'm going to pick those I want as and when or as the montage evolves. So this isn't a montage that I've already created once and now I'm going to recreate it for the video. I've made railway montages in the past, that's for sure. But what we're going to do here is try to cover not only the selection of images, but the thought process into why I selected what to go where. But of course, there is an enormous amount of personal choice here too. First thing is to select a nice texture for a background. And you can see I've included quite a few textures in here but already one of those is standing out for me. It's this one down here. And the reason I'm looking at this one, I'll make the thumbnails a bit bigger, is because I've got all the ingredients I want. I've got good texture here, but I don't have texture like I have here, which may impact perhaps too much on the railway montage. But of course, as you know, our selections here sometimes don't go according to plan and there's every chance I could end up changing that. If I scroll up a little bit, there's some others up here which I think may be just a little over the top, although this one would probably work and even this one too. But I'm going to open up the first one I selected into Photoshop and we'll make a start there. This image was shot some time ago in dull conditions and it was shot as a JPEG image. Now it lacks appeal and impact solely because the weather was dull and lifeless and I need to inject a little bit more impact into the image. I'm going to do that with my image menu at the top of the screen, adjustments and levels. You can use curves if you're more familiar with curves. I can see I've got a deficiency in the light tone sliders, so all I need to do here is to drag my light tone slider into the edge of the histogram and also my dark tone slider. And I've got a good basis now to start my montage. Now to make sure I don't get carried away and forget, I've just saved this as a Photoshop file calling this Railway 001. So now we need to go back to Adobe's bridge and I need to search for the next image I'm going to use. Given that this is a railway montage, it makes sense to use a train as the focal point and the compositional strong part of the image. I've got a few to choose from here. Let me just drag them down. This is one of the great things about Photoshop's bridge. I can bring all of these images down together. So I can see my trains all together. Let's have a look and see if I've got any more up here. No, I think that's about it. I could use this one, but it looks a bit cold and static compared to the others. The strongest standalone image is this one here, but we've got choices with the others as well. So I think here it's going to be personal choice, but let's pick this one and open this up into Photoshop. Before I do anything, I'm going to go to my layers over here, right click and choose to convert this to a smart object. Now I can drag the image into my textured background. To do that, drag out the tab with the move tool selected, click drag and drop, close down the original. And before I do anything else, I'll just hit control S. So I've got those two layers safely stored on my computer. I need to decide now the position of this train. If I select my crop tool just for a moment and click into the picture, I get the rule of thirds grid. So if I needed any assistance on where to place the train, this gives me some idea. From a height point of view, I think it's perfectly okay, but the center mass of the train needs to be around that area here. So let's come away from that crop and with the move tool 
I'm just going to move my train into the position where I think it's going to dominate my montage. Never sure, of course. The next stage would be to investigate those layer blend modes. Now I need to speed up the process just a little bit. So off camera, I've had a quick run down those layer blend modes to see which one appeals to me most. And I found that it's the darken that I like quite a bit. I think I may want to lift the train a little bit later on, maybe lift the lightness of it. And of course, we've always got the opportunity to use that little dodge we used before, where we made a copy of the layer to bring through detail in a strategic area. But at the moment, it looks quite good just as it is. I like the way the rust is coming through the body of the train over here and in the front and down here over the steam. It's working quite well. So before I go any further, I'm going to place a layer mask on this layer. We've just got a little bit of masking to do and to do that I'm going to use my brush tool. So I need black as my foreground colour. I need to select my brush. I think I'll have one a little bit bigger than that. Looking up at the flow at the top of the screen I can see it's set to 5%. I think with this image I can probably get away with 10% or more and I can certainly now start to mask away the straight edge at the top here and this bit over on the top right corner and certainly down that back side. We want to eliminate any signs of straight edges in the picture that we've just applied. I can come down around the edge of the train if I want to, making my brush slightly smaller. I've got these opportunities if I wish. How do we know what we're doing is correct. Well, as I've said many times, we don't. Now, looking at my blended two images, there doesn't appear to be any evidence of any straight edges created by the train layer. But sometimes they can creep through and we don't spot them. So here's a little tip on how to find them before they create a problem. If you go to the layers and we turn off our texture layer at the bottom of the stack, you can see here now that we have a straight edge at the top left. So select the mask and what we can do here is drop the flow rate down if you wish, but 10% may have been okay, and we can just make sure that we actually do deal with that. And maybe we can just fade back around the edge as well because we can now see the mask and what we're doing a lot more clearly. If you look at the top right you can see that in fact I did miss a little bit of the straight edge, I never masked quite enough and there you can see how easy it is to repair that, make good. Now we can turn the layers back and we know we've got a good job done. Looking for the next image for my railway montage I thought this was a good candidate. We can cut away all of that sky pretty quickly and easily. Because what remains is very dark, we can either use it as it is, make it darker, make it lighter, or even create a complete silhouette. Let's make a start by just going to my layers for a moment, and we'll right click and we'll convert this to a smart object. And I'm going to make a selection here, but because of the contrast between the signals and the piping and the gantry and the background. This should be a job that the Magic Wand tool should do quite well. The tolerance is set to its default setting, but I've got the option to add one selection to another checked. So when I click and make one selection, I get a little plus sign and I can make others adding one to the other. But I don't think we need to do that here. I think if we go to the select menu, and ask Photoshop to select something similar to what we've selected. There we have all of the image selected apart from the bottom left. And there we can make use of that plus sign to add one selection to another by clicking. And we've got a couple of little sparklies there. If the magic wand gets tricky, you can always select the lasso tool. Just make sure you've got the add to a selection icon checked. The little plus sign is the giveaway. 
and I can just gather those two little sparklies up and I think the nature of the montage this is going to be good enough. I'm going to refine the edge of that selection just by one pixel just to soften the edge a little bit and click OK. Now I'm going to add a layer mask and because we've got a selection running the mask is going to be created automatically but it's been created round the wrong way. If this happens to you, don't worry at all, because all we've got to do is invert that mask. Control I. There we have our signals floating on a transparent background. So the next stage is to pull out the tab with the Move tool selected from the top of the toolbox. Click, drag and drop. When we do this, of course, we always take the mask with us. But what do we do with this image? Well, I'm going to close this down and not save it because it was easy to make that cutout. But sometimes when we spend a bit of time making these cutouts, it's not a bad idea to save these in a folder called oddments or something because you never know when you may need that in the future. But for now I'm going to click no because I've just copied it into my layers and if I take you to the layers there you can see the signals and their mask but before I do any work I think I'll hit control s to save over the top of railway one I don't feel the need yet to make a second version now this is proof that this is a seat of the pants recording in other words creating the image from scratch without doing it in advance because I've experimented with one or two different blend modes here to speed up the video a little bit I've also tried resizing the signals and even a bit of masking but no matter what I do they just don't fit now you would think trains and signals would work perfectly but in this scenario they don't which is typical of what happens with montage creation but I'm going to select my layer and delete it and I need to look for something else well you can see what I have selected and I'm going to make this first into a smart object then take it into my grow in montage and I'll hit that control s once again now because I can save over the top of the previous version which had those signals in place what I was thinking here is to drop this in the bottom corner and see how this looks now the coal looks a little bit on the big side so I'm going to hit control T but if you're looking for the free transform tool it's in the edit menu control T I'm going to drag that down a little bit and I'm going to stick that over on the right hand side and what we can also do sometimes particularly with montages we can do a little bit of distortion as well with this scenario we could even use a perspective but I don't think I will on this occasion I'll hit the tick on the options bar and then take a look at the blend modes now I've hit darken and I like that straight away multiply not too keen overlay no not keen on that soft light and hard light I don't think is going to work oh I don't know that's not so bad is it but I think I prefer darken so let's apply a mask I'm going to use my graduated tool here and just click and drag down trying to mimic the edge of the train a little bit and that doesn't look too bad I can always enhance that with my brush keeping the flow rate down to about five percent a little straight edge I can see down in that bottom left corner so I'm going to get rid of that but you can see that doesn't work too bad at all something you'd expect to see in a railway is a pile of coal and it's bringing through the texture from behind nicely too amongst my railway images I've got quite a number of images that contain text and there's a temptation to use text and I've got a few options I could choose from but I'm a little bit wary that I may split the attention between the train and the text as the main source of interest because text always attracts our attention but I've used text in the past with railway montages and it does seem to work so I'm going to risk it and I'm going to open up this image into Photoshop 
you'll see quite a bit of repetition here because I'm going to go straight to my layers and create my smart object. Remember I'm doing this because I'm going to make the image smaller but then I could change my mind and need it bigger. The smart object allows me to do that with no loss of quality because as you can see here that's rather too large for the picture in question. So what do we do first when we drag an image in? Do we adjust the size or the blending? To be honest, I don't think there's a correct answer. It's just whatever you feel works best for you. I think what I'll do here though, I have looked at some of the blending modes and I think the one that works reasonably well is darken yet again, but I'm going to make this a lot smaller. So I'm going to bring up my free transform tool with control T hold the shift key to make sure we resize the image and keep the height and width in register click inside and I can now consider where I'm going to place that in relation to my picture quite like the pipes coming down there but I do need to have the whole of that oval I don't want to cut anything off so let's hit the tick on the options bar now I've got it in place I'm going to try one or two other selections multiply it that's better that works a lot better and so does that but if I use that I've got to take quite a bit of this away but I could do that quite easily probably using a layer mask or even a selection now let's stay with our masking and I'll show you another neat little trick I've just hit control zero there to fit the image on screen make it just a little bigger I'm going to place a layer mask alongside our oval plaque here but I'm going to zoom in a bit more because I'm going to go around the outside of this and it's only going to take me a couple of seconds and I'm going to do it manually. I'm going to pick up black as my foreground colour. I'm going to pick up my brush. I'm going to make a soft edge brush very small so I can see the edge of the plaque and I'm going to push my flow rate up to its maximum. I'm going to click right on the edge. I'm going to hold my shift key, click a little bit further round and a bit further round and a bit further round. And within a few seconds, I can go around the entire outer edge of this, even though I'm masking in straight lines because I've got my shift key held all of the time. You can see if I take short steps, we can actually take a nice oval shape certainly good enough for the montage that we're creating here and while I've been talking we've more or less done that I would take a little bit more care if I was doing this without recording a video now I can do the same thing with the pipe work if I like click hold the shift key click 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 it's dead easy this technique and it's amazing just how easy it is to go right the way down to the edge and I'll come across and we'll come up the other side and we'll see how that looks I'm doing this a little bit quick and dirty now now here's another little tip if you go to your layers we can see what I've done on the mask but if I hold the alt key and click we can actually see the mask and work on the mask in isolation so I can just flood in the outer edge here quite easily but probably the best way to do that would be to make a selection and flood the selection I'll do the main part so you can see what I mean we'll click into that area if you look at the edge you can see it's not quite right so I've got to move my selection that's pretty easy too in Photoshop select modify expand I'm going to guess the number of pixels I need doesn't matter if I get it wrong I'm a bit short probably could have done with another four so I'll expand it again and add the four now you can see the line is sitting right inside those black shapes I created and I can now flood that selection with color black is my foreground so alt backspace does the job hit control D to remove the selection back into our montage and there we can see what we have at the moment looking at it now I don't like those pipes at all but that's not a problem is it because all we need to do is to use the mask 
and take them away. And of course, once we've now moved them away, now we may want to pick up the Move tool and move the plaque around into a better place. And now I've dragged down something else that I don't want, so make sure you select your mask, pick up black, pick up your brush, and we can fix that too. I think it may look nice if that had a tilt now I'm looking at it. So once again, Control T, move outside the bounding box, give it a nice bit of rotation, hit the Enter key. Now I'm reasonably happy with that. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and we'll save this as Project 2. As I'm looking at that oval plaque, I like the plaque, I like the oval, I'm just finding it a little bit too dark. I've got two options, I think, to try to do something about that. I could go to my layers, select the image itself, and drop the opacity down. Failing that, what I could do is select the layer, go to my layers menu, and we can choose to rasterize that layer. So we've taken away the smart object status, which gives me the opportunity to hit Control L to bring up the levels. Because here I may be able to lighten the badge in a slightly different way that's more appropriate to what I'm looking for. Of course, if push comes to shove, I could make the image much bigger as well. I can reselect my mask drop my brush down and with the flow rate set very low I could lighten the load a little bit in certain places we don't have to be too specific with the work here you can see I'm just delicately lightening that plaque in certain areas but not others and we just have to fly by the seat of our pants and do what we think is right make the, the image as big as you like and try to work carefully and as you can see we can do this quick and easy or we can take some time it all depends on what you're trying to achieve but already I'm more pleased now with the effect I've got now I'm thinking of looking for something which may just hold in the left hand end of the railway montage now what I've chosen is this image and I just want the image from about that point or certainly I want the cases if I can and maybe if we can get these in as well. So let's first of all go to our layers. Let's make this into a smart object in case we need to adjust the size. Drag the tab out. Move tool is already selected so click drag and drop. And now I need to investigate what sort of blend mode I'm going to use. The picture looks a little bit odd at the moment and it's come in a little bit further down the stack. It should really have come in in that position and you'll recognize that from what we did with the other layers. So what I can do here, let's just drop the opacity down a little bit so I can see a bit of both. So I can move this along. So I need the image to be something like that. So I've got the cases in the bottom left corner and I've got these roof trusses which hopefully I can keep detail in and I'm going to go back to my layers and increase the opacity and now I need to look at the blend modes to see which one works the best. Now hard light does it for me at the moment but as you can see it's almost obliterating the train. But I can actually drag it down the stack and drag it beneath the train. And that's where it popped up a few moments ago. And I think we can start our masking process from here. So let's apply the mask and we can start to do that. I'm using a soft edge brush as usual. If you look up at the flow rate, it's quite high at 20%. I'm going to drop it to 5 by hitting 0, 05. Remember to do that using the keyboard shortcuts. You need this little icon checked but now I just want to brush back I'm going to take away the straight edge first I make my brush smaller and take away the straight edge because that's the important part now I can make my brush bigger and just sweep in gradually because I want to 
drag my picture from the top of the screen which is an occupational hazard I'll drop it back I was going to say we just need to blend in there gently keeping these shapes which all shout railway don't they that's pretty good I'm not keen on the green color here I think that's a bit too over the top and of course what we're also doing here is obliterating our engine so pushing my flow rate to 20 percent what I'm going to do is to reveal that again so I'm going to mask away all the bits and pieces that's covering up the train from the image we've just dragged in and here as you can see I'm taking a little bit of care along the edge sometimes we don't have to be that careful sometimes we do I like the buffers so we'll have them nicely showing and the red along the front is an important point can't see where the edge of my train goes so sometimes it's best to mask the whole thing then switch to white drop your brush down you can always make your image bigger and then you can always come back with the masking as you can see that's getting a little bit too dark for me so these are the beauty of mask I can switch back yet again make my brush big drop the flow rate down to about five percent couple of brush strokes over that and I can just have that looking just about perfect a little bit dark up there so I'm just going to tweak that a bit more but I don't want to lose the shapes that's looking good and I don't like the green here so all I'm going to do is to mask it away as you can see we can go over the edge here and it's not having any effect on our montage no detrimental effect on our montage maybe I've lost that top case which was a shame well switch to white and I'll bring the case back so far so good I've got a straight edge here which is drawing my eye but I'm going to leave it for the moment and I think at this stage I'll save this as railway montage 3 now here's my final image I've used the same techniques drag and drop convert to a smart object add a layer mask but the lamp is facing the wrong way I want it to face inwards and I want it to or I want to see if it's going to work up at the top left corner and I need to resize it too so first of all go to our edit menu and we can choose transform flip horizontal that gets the lamp around the correct way we can hit Control T or go back to the edit menu and choose free transform sometimes when you select the free transform tool the toggles you need to get to are off screen if that happens to you just hit Control zero so now I can drag that down just moving it to the right to gauge the area I'm working in going to rotate it a bit I want it there if it's going to work okay so let's position it there for a moment hit the tick to commit the change control zero now I need to experiment with my blend modes again the only one that works well enough is hard light but I think it's going to give me a little bit of work because I'm going to cut around the edge of that lamp I'm going to use the same techniques I described when we did the oval plaque so to make things a little bit easier for myself I'm going to go back to my layers I've got my mask selected I'm just going to return my image to its normal status because I need it like that to be able to see select the mask again I can zoom in really tight and then use exactly the same techniques as I described a few moments ago making our brush an appropriate size pushing up the flow rate holding the shift key and I can have that masked in a few seconds once I masked around the lamp and changed back to the hard light blend mode which I felt worked the best I then felt that the lamp was a little too small so I've just used my smart object status to increase the size of it and just rotate it very slightly so that it occupies that top left corner however it is still a little bit on the bold side so selecting the image what I'd like to do is to just darken that down a little bit now I could do that as I said earlier on with the opacity and let it blend into the background a bit more 
and that actually doesn't work too badly. I think I'll settle on that, and for the moment I'll just overwrite my railway version 3, because we're nearing completion. But, I think my instincts were right at the start. I'd like the top half of the background that I originally chosen to be darker. Now, I'm going to do this the quick and easy way. I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm going to select the background. I'm going to pick up my freehand lasso tool. And I'm going to make a selection of the area that I'd like to see darker. I can now feather the edge of that selection because I need this to be reasonably soft. Now I'm going to hide my selection. I can do that with Control H. The selection is still there and it's still doing its job, but I just wanted that marching ants out of the way so that when I bring up my levels via image, adjustment, levels, that I can see exactly what I'm doing when I drag down that mid-tone slider to bring that top down a little more. Now in doing so, it brings up the colour a little more than I would like. So while I'm doing this sort of work, let's go to image, adjustments and hue and saturation, and just take a bit of the saturation away again. So I'm getting the darkness that I wanted, but without the saturation. Now at this point, I'm going to save my image once more, because I'm at the point now where I want to flatten all of those layers together. Back into the layers then, we can go to the top right, and now choose Flatten because the work I'd like to do now is just localized color. I'd be using my sponge tool. I'm going to use the sponge tool firstly with the desaturate option. Just going to take away some of the saturation around certain areas which I think could do with being toned down a little bit. I'm going to use a quick broad brush approach here, but you may want to take just a little bit more care you can see I'm just killing some of the colour which I think is just a wee bit over the top. I want to stay with the red of the front of the train, but in other areas perhaps I don't want other colours competing too much. And then of course I could emphasise a bit of colour just in the areas that I want the colour to be emphasised in. Still working on taking those colours down. You can see exactly, it's taking just a few seconds, but that's not too bad. A little bit more down here as well. But if I wanted to reverse that now, and saturate a little bit of the red maybe to drag our attention right down there, maybe even some of the colours on the engine front, just to bring our attention nicely down to that point. Now I left my image for a little while, although it's instant for you, I left my image and come back to it. I'm going to bring up my levels because I'm going to tweak the light tone a little bit to give a bit more contrast. Darken down the mid-tone. And the only thing I'd like to do is to give this a bit of shading around the outer edge. I'm going to do that by using a separate layer. I think I've demonstrated this before. I'm going to create a new blank layer pick up my freehand lasso tool and I'm just going to make an irregular shape around here not sure if it's going to work as well as I'd like but we'll soon find out control shift I or go to select inverse soften the edge of your selection that looks okay then I'm going to select black as my foreground colour and hit Alt Backspace. Control D will remove the selection and I don't think that looks too bad. Straight out of the tin, it works a treat I think. Maybe I can just drop the opacity a tiny amount and if I was being ultra critical, 
perhaps I could add a little bit down the left hand edge. If I'm going to spray black onto that new blank layer, I'm going to make sure my flow rate is really low. And there you can see I can just sort of join up the corners if you like. Moving my brush backwards and forwards, maybe I can increase that a little more to about 5% flow. And anywhere else where I feel there's a deficiency, because it all depends really on the density of the edge of the image. And I certainly want to do that bit up there that's been getting on my nerves for some time. So there we've got a pretty powerful montage, I think. So there we have our six layer montage created in front of your very eyes, start to finish. And I'm quite pleased with the end result.